In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this dynamic traffic signal chart. So if we look at this table on the right hand side, if my values inside the chart are between zero to 35%, it's supposed to show a red signal. Similarly, between 36 to 75, it should show a yellow and above 76, a green. So let me demonstrate how this chart works. Right click on the chart, click on edit data. Let me pull up the data sheet here. Now I just need to change my value in this F column and I don't need to touch anything else. So let me change the value to a 36%. As you'll see here, between 36 to 75, it should show a yellow signal. About 75, so 76, it should show a green signal. With a little bit of formulas and formatting, we can easily create this dynamic traffic signal chart right here in PowerPoint. On a blank slide, go to insert, click on chart, click on XY scatter, Select this bubble chart, which is second from the right. Click OK. Click on this plus sign in the top right corner. Uncheck chart title, grid lines. In the data sheet, let's have same values for all three bubbles. For the Y values, we will be entering formulas. To begin with, let's make them five for the first one, three for the second one. First one needs to be at one. All three bubble sizes need to be exactly same. So let's keep them all 10, close the data sheet, double click on the vertical axis, change the maximum value on the right to seven. Once we change that, the minimum value changes automatically. So let's change that back to zero. Then double click on the horizontal axis, change the maximum value on the right to two. The major and minor units can both be same. It doesn't really matter. Let's also change the minimum value to be zero. We don't want PowerPoint changing it automatically if something else were to change. Let's shrink our chart to a minimum size. I think this much size should be good. Then double click on the bubbles, increase their sizes a little. So let's try 200, that's too much. How about 150? Basically we need a good amount of spacing between our bubbles. Right now they are touching each other. So let's reduce the value even more. I think this could work. So let's stick with this. Let's remove both the axes. So click on the plus sign, uncheck the axis option. For the next step, we need to place a rectangle on top of it. So I'm going to select this rounded rectangle, then draw a rectangle of this size. I'm going to increase the transparency for it so we can see our circles behind it. Let's get rid of the outline. To make sure both sides have equal spacing, I'm just going to create a rectangle like so. Place it on both sides. Make sure the spacing on both sides is equal. Let's do that for the left and right hand side as well. Okay, that looks good. Let's remove these shapes. For the next step, we need to draw three circles and place them on these holes. So go to insert, click on shapes, draw a circle. Let me choose another color, about this gray. Increase the transparency, remove the outline. Let's match this circle with the bubble circle. Okay, let's duplicate those. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to remove this rectangle and make sure that our circle sizes match exactly. If it's slightly smaller, it's better than having it larger because if our hole is larger, there will be some white space in our signal. You will see that if we get this slightly wrong. For now, I think I'm happy with this. Okay, let's duplicate these circles for the remaining two bubbles. Okay, now let's copy our rectangle and these three circles, place a copy of them to the side and let's use this copy to make changes. So while I have the rectangle and the three circles selected, go to shape format, click on merge shapes, click on fragment and delete the three circles. Let's change the rectangle to a dark gray, remove the transparency. Let's place this shape on top of our bubble chart. I think it aligns nicely. Now let's change the colors of our circles. So we need top one to be red, middle one to be yellow, and the bottom one to be green. Let's place this here, it's looking good. 
Let's go back to our data sheet for the chart. Now for the Y values, we need to enter three formulas for three bubbles. Basically, we want our formula to return the values phi, three, and one, depending on the range we have set. I'm going to make my input cell as F3. So right now I'm in F2. So this is where we will be placing our input value. So based on the value that we enter here, we want one of the three bubbles to be shown. So the ranges we have set are these, if you remember, if the value entered is between zero to 35, we want the red bubble to show. Similarly for yellow and green, if these conditions are satisfied, then we want the respective bubbles to show up. To do that, we have small formulas, which I'll explain. So I'm just going to paste my formula here in the first Y value. Let's understand the formula. Now the formula checks if the value entered in F3 cell, which is F and three, is it greater than or equal to zero? Is it less than or equal to 35%? If yes, then we want it to return a value of five. If not, then it should return a value of minus one. Now all these values five and minus one are nothing but Y coordinates. Hit tab, let's enter our second formula, which checks if the values are between 35 to 75. If they are between 35 and 75, we want a number three to return else minus one. And you can pretty much guess for the last Y value, we need to check if this value here, is it greater than 75 and less than or equal to 100%, then we want a one return. So as you can see here, it's checking, is it greater than 75 and less than or equal to 100%, then we want a one return. Okay, let's close the data sheet for now. Let's overlap our signal rectangle here. Now let's test our chart. So I'm going to right click on the chart and test my signal for different values. So let's start with zero. At zero, we want red signal to be shown. This is correct. How about 35%? Still red, correct. How about 36%? Now we have our signal showing a different color as we have programmed it to do. Let's change it to 50%, sticks to yellow. How about 75? Still yellow. 76, it's changed to green. Let's enter 100%, we have the green signal. What happens if we enter a value outside of zero to 100%? Let's see, let's enter a negative 1%. You will see that it shows nothing. Same goes for the higher values. If we enter 101%, nothing shows up. It's only when we enter value between zero to 100%, one of the three bubbles would show up. We can make one more change. I don't like this white color showing up. So we can place another rectangle in the back. So let's create a rectangle of this size. Give this a color of lighter gray no outline send this to back and now it looks much better once you are happy you can group everything if you want to show the values you will have to add the text box manually so i would suggest you place the text box either at the bottom or to the side depending on your slide layout so here is fine or here too it's up to you i have created two layouts for you so your signal could look like this. So I have these fancy effects going on here with some shapes to the side to give this a much more realistic look. Then I also have a layout like this one with some text. On the last slide, I have specified the formulas that we have. And if your ranges are different than what I have, how to change those values. So here as an example, if let's say your values are going from zero to 40% for red, you just have to change the second value from 35% to 40. If your new yellow values are from 41% to 70%, you just need to change these highlighted values to match these. So here you will see that because I have a greater than sign, which doesn't include the value we have here, in order for our values to start from 41%, we need to enter 40% here. Similarly, here we want the values to start from 71%. That's why I have value here as 70% instead of 71. If you want this to be changed to 41%, you can do that. You'll just have to add an equal to sign here. 
I hope that makes sense. So once you have your formulas ready, just paste them into individual cells here in the Y values column. The first one where we have five, this is where the red formula needs to go. And the second one is where the yellow and the last row of Y values is where we will paste in the green values formula. So it's pretty straightforward. Feel free to test this out yourself. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe for future videos and I will catch you next time.